Hello. Today I want to talk to you about doing resonance structures to delocalize charge. Uh, this is a key part of what you're going to do for homework for tomorrow and something we're going to focus on again on Monday. Uh, and we're going to use this strategy throughout the semester to help us understand how organic molecules behave. Uh, so what I want to do is just show you how I solve problems where we're delocalizing charge using resonance uh, in hopes that will help you as you do your own work. So we're going to have two examples. We're going to first focus on delocalizing a positive charge, um, and then we'll do another molecule where we delocalize negative charge. Um, the molecules I'm choosing are ones that came off the final exam from Chem 111, uh, and I know that was a, a challenging problem on Chem 111 uh, and something that a lot of people needed more practice with. So now's a good time to, to look at those problems. So here's one of those molecules, and in this molecule we have a positive charge on oxygen, and our goal is to figure out over how many atoms is that charge delocalized. Uh, and when you think about a molecule like this, you want to think about how can I spread that charge around, make the molecule more stable, um, and think about how to do that using curved arrows. And that's the key thing that I want us to get used to thinking about, or using curved arrows to do delocalization. So in this molecule, the positive charge is on oxygen. Uh, that oxygen is going to want electrons to come toward it to get rid of that positive charge. Um, and whenever we're moving electrons, we're moving either lone pair electrons or electrons in p orbitals. All right? Sigma bond electrons do not move when we draw resonance structures. So since there's a pi bond directly attached to that oxygen, we can move those electrons onto the oxygen and then draw another resonance structure. And so we've given the oxygen uh, another lone pair, and if we're keeping track of where the formal charge goes, because again, if we start with something with a positive formal charge, all of our resonance structures will have to be plus one in formal charge. Uh, this carbon had four bonds to it, now it only has three bonds to it, so that carbon is positively charged, and so we can see that's where the positive charge ends up. All right? And so now we can look here and say, is there some way that electrons can flow towards that carbon so the carbon doesn't have a positive charge. And we actually have two options um, at this point. One of them is to take this pi bond, and again, we're going to move either lone pair electrons or pi bond electrons. Right? So we have a pi bond there we can move uh, and draw the structure that we get. And we'll note that there were three bonds, four bonds, four bonds to this carbon. Now there are only three bonds. That carbon is positively charged. All right. Sometimes it's also helpful when you're doing this to draw in the H's instead of using complete organic shorthand. So if you draw in the H's, you can verify that all the other carbons in this molecule have four bonds, so they have no formal charge. All right. And as we said, there's another way to delocalize, and that's to delocalize on the other side with the pi bond that's in that position. And we can see this carbon now only has three bonds, and so that is going to be positively formal charge, um, and we can continue. And if we look up at either of these structures, if we try to delocalize the charge outside the ring to the carbon out here, that carbon only has sigma bonds. It has no lone pairs. So there's no way that we can have the charge end up on this carbon. right? It doesn't have a p orbital. If there's no p orbital there, we can't do delocalization. Right? But from this structure, we can have the lone pair on oxygen form a pi bond, delocalizing the charge further. And now, with oxygen having three bonds and a lone pair, it's positively charged. And don't uh, 
be afraid to put a positive charge on oxygen. Uh, as long as it has eight electrons around it, positive charge on oxygen happens quite often. Right? Just make sure it has an octet. Uh, but this resonance structure and the one we started with, those are completely reasonable resonance structures. Um, and one thing that I want you to think about is for this molecule, the resonance structures that have positive charges on oxygen, those structures are actually more stable than the structures with positive charge on carbon, even though oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So I want you to think about why that might be. That's a critical point. We have one other resonance structure we can draw. It's the resonance structure with the pi bonds moved in the benzene ring, right? And so we now have shown that we can delocalize this charge over a bunch of atoms. So let's draw the resonance hybrid to highlight over how many atoms this positive charge has been delocalized. All right, so draw out the sigma bond framework and then draw in all the electrons that don't move and then you can draw where the partial charges and partial bonds are. So we have partial bonds all throughout the ring. And it looks like a benzene ring with oxygen in it. Um, and so we have partial positive on that oxygen, on that carbon, on that carbon, on that carbon, and on that oxygen. So the charge is delocalized over five atoms. So it's a quite stable positive charge spread over that many atoms. All right, so what I want to do next is look at how to delocalize negative charge. Right, and so we'll erase this and put up a new molecule. Right, and it's it's actually the same molecule, but instead of having a positive charge um, by adding a proton, we've actually taken a proton away uh, to see how that's going to work. So now we're looking at delocalizing this negative charge. Um, and in the previous one where we delocalized positive charge, uh, we moved electrons with one curved arrow between structures. So we moved two electrons between each resonance structure. When we're working with negative charge, we're going to actually have to move four electrons at a time, so we'll end up having two curved arrows per resonance structure. That's an important difference when you're thinking about delocalizing positive versus negative charge. Right? So when we look here, it's important to draw in that H so that we're clear that the carbon that's charged has an octet. Uh, instead of having four bonds, it has three bonds and a lone pair. Um, and again, we're looking for p orbitals that we can move that lone pair electron toward. So we can move that pair of electrons towards the carbon-oxygen double bond. So we can put that negative charge onto the oxygen. We can't do anything else with the charge going in that direction. Right? But we can move the charge in the other direction because there's also a pi bond on the other side. Right? And when we move the lone pair towards a pi bond, we're going to go from lone pair pi bond to pi bond lone pair. Right? Again, lone pair pi bond, now it's pi bond lone pair. Same thing on this side. The lone pair is going to turn into a pi bond between these two carbons. This pi bond turns into a lone pair on the adjacent carbon. Again, it's helpful to fill in that there's an H here. So again, we're clear that we still have an octet on that carbon. It's just now negatively charged. Um, and we can continue to delocalize that charge because we're adjacent to a pi bond. Right, so we can have those electrons form a new pi bond 
and then the adjacent pi bond to the carbon oxygen, to the oxygen, turns into a lone pair on oxygen. And it turns out that if we try and delocalize these charges anymore, uh, we're going to end up violating octet rules, right? So these four structures are the only structures we can draw to delocalize that negative charge. So now we can draw out the resonance hybrid. So those are all of our partial pi bonds, and the negative charge is shared over four atoms, right? And not surprisingly, the best resonance structures, the ones that are most stable, are the ones with the negative charge on oxygen, right? Those are the ones that are going to uh, contribute most to the resonance hybrid. Um, and again, simply oxygen more electronegative than carbon, those are, are more stable resonance structures. So again, I hope these examples help as you think about delocalizing charge when you're thinking about the homework. Um, and continue to practice this. Um, it's something that is a little bit of a challenge initially, but we continue to get better as we practice.